Two questions. Will a JKBMS protect your battery when connected to a SunSync inverter? And question number two, is your inverter possibly robbing you of power? And the answer is, well, maybe, and that's what we're gonna to test today. In a previous video, we looked at how to get the JKBMS connected and communicating with the SunSync inverter. We also had a look at what information and limits the BMS is reporting to the inverter, and we also looked at the bulk and the float charge functions. So if that is something that you guys are interested in, or maybe you missed that video, I will leave a link to that video in the description and also at the end of this video. So today's video is basically a follow on from the previous video to test some more of those limits. So I've got a JK inverter BMS connected to the inverter and it's using the CAN communication protocol. I've got a requested charge voltage of 55.2 volts set, which is 3.45 volts per cell and a continued charge current limit of 40 amps set and also a continued discharge current limit of 40 amps set. Now, quick question, if 40 amps is set in the BMS, why is it showing a 38 amp limit on the inverter? Well, the reason for this was covered in the previous video, so if you guys are interested in that, I'll leave a link in the description and also at the end of this video. And by the way, the 90% discharge limit has been set in the time of use function in the system mode settings. So this is not really a setting in the BMS, but rather a setting on the inverter allowing the battery to be discharged according to the state of charge information that the BMS is reporting to the inverter. So just something to note before we move on, I've set these values so that we can easily test and see what happens when the limits are reached. But please keep this in mind, you need to set the values uh, that are in accordance with your specific batteries or cells that are being used. So that out of the way, let's go ahead with the charge limit testing. Currently, the battery is only charging at 7 amps, but why is this? Because the BMS is showing it can receive up to 38 amps, so why only 7 amps? Well, that is because we have a 10 amp charge limit set on the inverter. So if I increase this limit to 25 amps, uh, then we can see that the battery charge current is ramped up to 22 amps. So in this case, the inverter's charge limit is the limiting factor even though the BMS is reporting that it can handle a much higher charge current limit. So what happens if we increase the inverter's charge limit to 65 amps, which is well above the charge limit that is set in the BMS? You can see that the charge current is now ramped up to 35 amps and not the 65 amp limit that we just set. So this means that the continued charge current set in the BMS is now the limiting factor, or the BMS is now the limiting factor. And in this case, uh, we can see that the charge current is held a little bit lower than the BMS limit of 38 amps. So it looks like the inverter is building in a small buffer zone and the BMS is also building in a small buffer zone. And if I reduce the inverter's limit down to 40 amps, we can see well, basically nothing, no change, because the inverter's limit is still higher than the BMS limit. But after reducing it again down to 20 amps, now we can see the inverter's charge limit takes priority once again and reduces the charge down to 17 amps. So that's the first charge current test. But then this got me thinking, what happens if we've got a massive amount of solar power available and that solar power is being used up by a massive load? So maybe there is no excess power or there's only a very small amount of excess power going into the battery as charge. What happens if we were to flip a switch and immediately remove that massive load how are these limits going to react to this massive inrush of current before the MPPTs even have a chance to think about what's going on? So I've got around 8.5 kilowatts coming in from the solar panels and basically all of the power is being used by the load. Now you'll notice I'm actually using a small amount of grid power and if I hop over to the battery screen we can see that basically no charge is coming in. So in this test, I've got the inverter's charge limit set at 25 amps, which is lower than the BMS limit of 38 amps. So watch closely here. Let's remove the 4 kilowatt load. And you can see as soon as I remove the load, the charge jumps up to 30 amps. So it's actually overshooting the inverter's limit by about 5 amps, but it does eventually settle down to the 25 amp limit. 
So that was the inverter's charge limit set lower than the BMS limit. But what happens if the inverter's charge limit is set higher than the BMS limit? So again, I have around 8.5 kilowatts coming in from the panels and basically all of the power is being used by the load. You will notice a small amount of charge though going into the battery. So in this test, the BMS is reporting a limit of 38 amps to the inverter and let's increase the inverter's charge limit to 65 amps, so much higher than the BMS limit. So watch closely again. Pulling 7.5 kilowatts, you can see as soon as I remove the four kilowatt load, the charge current jumps up to almost 43 amps. So it's actually overshooting the BMS limit, but then it's caught pretty quickly and it settles down to around 38 amps. It does actually exceed the limit again for a few seconds, but once again comes back down. So I guess this is why it's important to have your overcurrent protection delay and recovery time set correctly. Because if the inverter is slow to react and those protection times are set too short, you may end up triggering the protection. So considering all of this, I think I'm gonna take the safe route and set the inverter's charge limit slightly lower than the BMS charge limit. I don't really wanna be running up against these BMS limits all the time. But also keep in mind that the JK Inverter BMS has a built-in 10 amp charge current limiter, uh, which will, of course, if the limit is exceeded, it'll limit the charge current down to 10 amps but I would rather have this as a safety net and not rely on it as an everyday function. So that said, if you guys forget to set your inverter's charge limit or for whatever reason, maybe the inverter's charge limit is set much lower than the BMS limits and you're thinking to yourself, not a problem, my batteries are connected, the communication is working and all of my limits are set in the BMS. Well, in this case, your inverter may be robbing you of precious excess power that you could be using to charge. So that was a quick charge current limit test. But when it comes to the charge voltage limits and how the RCV or the requested charge voltage and the RFV requested float voltage, how those interact with the inverter, all of that testing was covered in the previous video, which I mentioned earlier. So remember, I will link that in the description and also at the end of this video. But in a nutshell, the BMS requests what voltages that it wants to charge, and then the inverter will supply charge up to these voltages. So now, what about the discharge current limits? Well, let's have a look at those. So at this moment, there is no solar power available, only battery and grid power. And you'll notice that the full load is being covered by the battery, which is 13 amps. I've still got the 40 amp continued discharge limit set in the BMS, and it's reporting the 38 amp limit to the inverter. Now, 38 amps equates to about 1,900 watts. So let's load it up and see what happens. So I've just turned on a two kilowatt load and the total power draw is just under three kilowatts. Now we can see that there's only 20 amps being drawn from the battery, but hang on, a three kilowatt load should draw the full 38 amps right up to the limit and the shortfall should come from the grid or potentially another source depending on how your inverter is set up. So why is it only letting me draw 20 amps? Well, remember back to the charge settings, if the inverter's discharge amp limit is set lower than the BMS, the inverter's limit takes priority. And that is exactly what's happening now. The inverter's limit is set to a maximum discharge of 20 amps. So like before, if you forget to set your inverter's discharge settings accordingly, it may be robbing you of available power. Now this is not such a problem when there is grid power available because it just pulls the additional power from the grid. But if you are experiencing rolling blackouts or load shedding, or maybe you are in an off-grid environment, you could be experiencing nuisance stripping when in fact you've got all of this excess power available. So let's see what happens when we set the inverter's limit higher than the BMS limit. So I've turned off the two kilowatt load and we are back to the base load of around 700 watts. So let's go ahead and set the inverter limit higher than the BMS limit. Now remember the BMS limit is 38 amps, so let's set the inverter's limit up to 60 amps and see what happens. At the moment, there is about 700 watts coming in from the battery. And I've just turned on the two kilowatt load and the battery load has shot up to 1,900 watts. And we can see that there is a current draw from the battery of 37 amps. And that is right up against the BMS limit and the rest of the power is coming from the grid. 
So I guess this is all actually working as expected. Now remember earlier the time of use setting was set up to allow the battery to drain down to 90% and then no more power must be drained from the battery. So let's test that. I've turned on the two kilowatt load again and you can see that we are drawing the maximum power from the battery right up to that BMS limit of 38 amps and the state of charge is 92%. Now, you can also see that the shortfall of power is being drawn from the grid. And as the state of charge hits 90%, the load on the battery should shift over to the grid and the battery should stop discharging. And there it is, 90% is reached and the battery load reduces and the grid load is increasing. So the battery is only used down to the state of charge that we set and of course the state of charge the BMS is reporting to the inverter. But what happens if there is no grid power or no solar power available and the inverter's limit or the BMS limit is reached? Well, I'm sure you guys can guess what's going to happen, but let's have a look anyway. So currently the battery is powering the entire load, around 500 watts as you can see. And there is no solar and there's no grid power feeding into the inverter. Also, the inverter's maximum discharge amps is set to 20 amps, which is lower than the 38 amp BMS limit. So I'm going to add 600 watts of load, which will take us right up to the 20 amp limit. And now I've just added another 600 watts and the battery current has jumped to 33 amps. And there we go, the fault alarm sounds and the inverter trips and everything goes to zero. If we quickly check on the fault, it shows F14 DC overcurrent fault, which of course is to be expected. So I'll remove the excess load and the inverter will eventually reset. So that was the inverter's discharge limit, but what happens if the BMS limit is exceeded? Again, the battery is carrying the full load and there's no solar or no grid power available. So I'll go ahead and set the inverter's limit way higher than that BMS limit. Let's say 60 amps again. And just to check, the BMS limit is still at 38 amps. So I'll go ahead and add 1.2 kilowatts of load, which brings us up to 34 amps draw from the battery. So I'll add another one kilowatt of load, which bumps the current all the way up to 54 amps, which of course exceeds the 38 amp limit. So what do you think is going to happen? Well, you guessed it, it's going to trip once again. And there's the fault alarm and it trips. And it's the same F14 DC overcurrent fault. So reducing the load once again and the inverter will eventually reset. So having your BMS report its limits to the inverter and the inverter actually respecting these limits is protecting your batteries. So at least for now, everything looks like it is working well. That's to say under the current inverter firmware and the current BMS firmware, hopefully it continues in the future. So in summary, the inverter's charge and discharge amp limit settings have the overriding control as long as they are set lower than the BMS limits. But when it comes to charging, if on the BMS the overcurrent charge protection kicks in and that charge limiter kicks in, that is going to limit the charge down to 10 amps. So here's another question that might come up. On the BMS, when the current limiter kicks in, is that 10 amp limit going to be reported to the inverter and then we can see it on the screen? So whether that comes from the master or the slave BMS, either one of those, if they go into the limiting state, are they going to update the inverter? I'm not 100% sure, although I've got a slight idea. I did catch a glimpse of something happening when I was doing some of my testing, but the camera wasn't rolling at the time. And if I remember correctly or remember correctly what I was seeing, I think when it goes into this current limiting state, it does update the display or the limits shown or reported to the inverter. I'm not 100% sure. So many questions are popping up and uh, maybe more testing needs to be done. I'm just not sure when I'm going to get around to this testing though. Nevertheless, we have already covered quite a lot of testing in this video already. And remember, we did cover the charge limit current testing in the previous video. And actually come to think about it, in the original 
JK inverter BMS review video, I also tested the charge current limiter kicking in. So I'll also leave a link to that video in the description or maybe somewhere here up on screen. So if you guys found the video useful, please give it a thumbs up, leave us a comment, let us know what you think, and also share it with other friends or family or people that you think may be interested in this type of thing. Thank you very much for watching and thank you guys for all of the comments that you've put in on the previous videos. It is always great to hear from you. Thanks again and we'll see you next time. Cheers.